and welcome to the preview show on EMTV. This week we look ahead to Edinburgh Parson People Monarchs match against the Red Card Bears on Friday evening. Joining me is Mitchell Davy to look ahead to the tie. Coming up on tonight's show, we'll also speak to Cote Garcia, and of course we've got Mike, Mike Hunter's blast from the past, a couple of classic races for you later on in the show. Mitchell, just to look back over last Friday's match against Berwick, uh, a big, another big win for the Monarchs. Uh, how do you think it all went? Yeah, as a team, um, you know, everyone performed. It was a, it was a tricky surface, but um, you know, the track staff done an excellent job preparing the track, you know, to the best they could with you know all the rain they had during the day. So. You know, it was good just to for the boys to get down and, and do the job and get the points in the bag. Look as if we've got a powerhouse at one uh, at heat lead, uh, the three heat leader spots. Yeah, definitely. You know, Sam, Sam and Ricky, we, everyone knew what they can do. But, you know, Eric's really stepped up to fill that number three spot. And, you know, there's not, not a lot you can complain about. You know, they're, they're all firing and, and scoring bags of points. Is it good to have a bit of internal... Like kind of competition between guys for for obviously now we're looking at the guys that are looking to race in heat 15 Eric's obviously pushing for that in every match so far last season is it good to have that competition within the side yeah it is it is and it isn't um the good bits being you know they all want it they all want that extra race you know they want to be top points go on the day for the you know to to assist their own racing um but you know at the same token, you don't want the boys disheartened if they don't get a, a heat 15 or something like that. So, you know, it does have its positives and negatives, but, you know, I think the boys, if they all keep firing the way they are, you know, they might have to put a system in the play of yeah. who's going to sit out each week, you know. Um, but apart from that... That's got to be a good thing that's happening. Isn't yeah, it? <laughs> no, it's, it's great. And, you know, Mark, the way Mark's riding, he's not far off a, a heat 15 performance either. So, you know, it's, it's just, it's one of those things, you know, I'm sure as the season goes on, everyone will get their shot. Um, but yeah, for now, the boys are firing, so happily let them fight for it. <laughs> I'll speak to you about Mark Russ in a second, but first of all, I want to speak about the track. Uh, during the day on Friday, there, there was rainfall, but by the time mid-afternoon to late afternoon came, the the, the track, the, the weather was fine, the track looked great, but it did get a bit slick on the outside, deep on the outside, you had a bit of a gap between races yourself, that must have been quite difficult. Yeah, it was It was a, a little different to normal, um, with the amount of rainfall that, that did, it, it got down to the base, and as the races progressed, the when the base started to come through, you know, it was really slimy, and with how cold it was that night, um, you know, it, it did make it tricky, and they put down fresh material as well, late on on Friday to, to try and dry up the track so you know it created that big outside sort of dirt line um, you know you can see the boys were sometimes having trouble getting through it and and with if you went from the transition of the the slimy inside to the to the heavy outside you know it did make for some interesting shapes from the boys <laughs> and uh, unfortunately a few crashes but hopefully everyone's all right from them and yeah you know it was it was tough, but both teams had to ride it, yeah. and yeah, thankfully we we got the better end of the stick. Uh, just to speak about Mark slightly, that, that's obviously a diff difficult situation for you because Mark's going so well at reserve that it seems to be limiting you to three rides per meeting. You're having that gap between races. Is it is that maybe for your own point of view, kind of making you struggle to get into some sort of momentum, especially around your own track? Um, yeah, yeah, or no. It's 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 hard because you know you got to put a, a firing reserve out while, while they are going, you know, especially if you, if you need the points. Um, Alec explained to me the reasons for for taking me out of one of my rides on, on Friday, which I was completely happy with. Um, you know, it was a completely understandable situation, but it did leave me with, a, I think, a ride in Heat 4 to Heat 12, and the track had changed, you know, a hell of a lot in between those times. So... But that's that's something i got to, you know, i got to take on myself, and, you know, if... if for instance, I've got to fight to get all my four rides. You know, I just have to lay down the marker in, in my first two and hopefully, you know, that's shown enough to to Alec or whoever's team manager on the night and they let me, you know, do my rides. Just to speak about you again slightly, um, you were guested down at Workington for Scunthorpe. Uh, good score down there. You must have enjoyed it. Yeah, it was it was good fun. Um, riding at number six, which was, was a change. Um, Workington's a track I, en I enjoy riding, um, be big and fast, and um, yeah, I was just happy to, to be making starts on the night, and 
you know, I had, had good bike speed. I was searching for something a little more. And, you know, I think with, if I could have, could have found that in the bike setup, you know, we could have had a few more points. But I was happy with the return. And, you know, it's just progression for myself at this time of the year. You know, I'm, I'm back in the championship now. So it's just getting up to championship speed and staying on that speed. And, yeah, the more meetings I do, the better. In some respects, would have been better if the National League had started perhaps a little bit earlier to to help you get that the season underway maybe a, a, a little bit sharper? Yeah, the National League starting earlier would have would have helped. Um, just to iron out bike problems. I'm still having a few little teething problems with a couple, couple of my bikes. But yeah, it's it's one of those things you, you sort of deal with what you dealt. And But I'm just happy to, you know, be getting two, three meetings a week. You know, normally, well, for a lot of the other boys, it could be only one meeting a week at this time of the year. So, you know, I'm just happy to get the riding and... Guest books, uh, guest bookings, and then, yeah, I think our our calendar starts to really ramp up um, from from this weekend onwards. So, yeah, I'll be looking for a break shortly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as we said, the Red Cat Bears visit Armadale Stadium on Friday evening. And um, before we preview the match with Mitchell uh, today, I caught up with Cody Garcia. Of course, Cody was left without a team at the start of this season, but injuries in the Red Cat Bears side have meant he's got a six week reprieve so to speak uh, within British Speedway uh, I caught up with him today and got his thoughts ahead of Friday's match Quite obviously you've been given the opportunity at Red Car how, how do you think it goes what, what are the ambitions well uh, so far it's been quite disappointing for me to be honest like I didn't have much um, much track time since I crashed in October last year when I was for Glasgow so it's been quite hard to be honest, uh, trying to get sharper and stuff like that again. Um, obviously, just take time. Uh, I bring one of my bikes back to Argentina for training. Uh, I couldn't do much. My leg wasn't ready, so I didn't want to have uh, both times the same mistake with my legs on it uh, again. So uh, I didn't do much. I practiced over the winter in motocross and things like that, but it wasn't enough. And I am. You know, it's hard, you can do really well in practice, but it's hard to get on the track when you need to be sharp on the first corners, you need to be aggressive, you need to have the, the right time at the right moment, and so far it's been not sharper to me, like, you know, I need more track time. It will be calm, uh, it will be disappoint my two first meeting, but I'm getting my engines back from Poland and stuff like that, so my equipment will be exactly the same that I was riding last year. How difficult is it to come into a team when you know it's only on a short term basis and basically you're on trial? Um, it's hard, just put like kind of extra pressure on your shoulders because you have that month to improve and uh, do it really well and after that the staff from Redcar will be just take the decision if they want me on board or not for the rest of the season so so far I mean focus and give it 100% on the track and off the track you've been trying you know I've been training a lot uh, and stuff like that but it's something that I can handle uh, maybe I will be start to doing really well and they just keep the same decision they bring back back to be a push which is normal uh, it can happen so it's kind of strange um, sometimes you need to feel part of the team and uh, it's been hard you know feel part of something that you know that in one month can change everything again so it's kind of you know extra pressure but uh, once that you are riding you need to leave that things behind not just one side and just do go outside and do what you need to do just give it your best uh, coming to Armadale on Friday you're missing Jason Garrity and Charles Wright in comes a, a, a rider you're familiar with Richie Worrell um, still fancy the chances of he challenging the Monarchs on Friday? Oh definitely I mean uh, and we take three points from uh, Scunthorpe on Sunday of course my performance wasn't good but I know uh, Richie so it would be nice to ride with him again, uh, I was riding with him in Glasgow last year, and it's quite uh, relaxed to have someone like as him as a number one. He have a lot of experience run every single track in UK, so he can help you a lot with setup, especially me, stuff like that. Uh, but um, definitely will be good, and definitely we still have chances. You've obviously ridden as a monarch and as a tiger at uh, Armadale. Um, is it a track you enjoy? Well, to be honest, yeah, uh, it's a very technical track. I didn't do 
brilliant because take time you know track time and stuff like that but it's a track that I like to go it's a safe track unfortunately my last time over there wasn't great I have a few problems with the bike uh, I failed to score uh, but I'm up for it so it would be nice to come back and you know uh, now on I'm, I need to do it really well on every single track so if it's something happy with red car and I can't keep with them I need to show it to every single club uh, that I can do it well at their track so it's kind of uh, you know just take it easy but just go and you know go for yourself and just do it Heat 11 Richard Lawson, Sam Masters, James Sargent and Corte Garcia and it's Masters who's just squeezed himself and here's Garcia coming around the outside as well Does Sam Masters know he's there? I don't think so. But Sam's gone off in front and Garcia is in second after a lap. This would be astounding if he could stay there. Sergeant's the man pressing him. Oh, Garcia, he almost rode himself into the fence there. Two laps gone. He's too quick in there. Locked up. He's still in second. Austin's trying to make some ground up. Garcia is still in second after three laps. Tiger's queuing up to try and press. He's got one bend to go. Where's he going to finish up? He's been passed by a sergeant, but he got a great point there. Well, that was amazing by Garcia. A 4-2 in the end to the Monarchs, with Richard Lawson incredibly at the back. Big thanks to Cody for joining us on the preview show there. Uh, just to look ahead to Red Card Mitchell, it's going to be a tough match. Even without the likes of Jason Garrett and Charles Wright. Uh, Jason, unfortunately, he's, uh, has a family through on Friday. Charles Wright racing with Somerset. They bring in Richie Worrell at number one. We all know what he can do around Armadale. It's going to make it make for a very, very hard evening. Yeah, it's um, uh, Red Card always seem to be a bit of a, a bogey team for, the, for Edinburgh. Um, so... You know, it's going to be an interesting match. It's a good choice, I guess, in Richie. You know, on his day, he's one of the best riders to come to Armadale. So, um, you know, a bit of pressure on him at coming in at number one for them to, to do a job because, you know, I think Garrity, Garrity is really good around Armadale as well. Um, and Charles Wright's on really good form this year. So maybe a loss missing Charles. Um, but, you know, we'll see what the team brings. And if all our team keeps riding the way we do, I'd... Um, hopefully it shouldn't be a problem. A red car a side that's slightly slipped under the radar as having a solid team that could could be pushing for a playoff spot. Yeah, I think I think they always always sort of do. Um, I don't know why that is. Maybe because red car is such a fair track to go to, it makes it hard. Um, but you know they got a team full of racers as well, so you know it's going to be all action. You know, lots of boys trying to trying to get as many points as possible. Uh, just looking at the opposition for yourself, there's Richard Hall and Ellis Perks uh, down at reserve. It seems to be quite a strong reserve pair, and got especially going on in their matches so far this season. Um, is that a big challenge for yourself and Mark to kind of nullify the threat of their reserves, especially if they've got an RR ride? Yeah, it's it's going to be, you know, a, a lot on on me and Mark how we perform to. You know, get that extra points for the team. Um, like we say, we know what our top boys can do. Um, if Pico is fighting fit, you know he's going to be back back to his usual self. And Cleggy's Cleggy's really uh, starting to pick up form now as well. So he, you know, if me and Mark can sort of nullify the reserves um, and what they're doing, it's going to be good. But they're built sort of this the similar setup as as essentially we are with a strong number six and the 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 British reserve. Um, but yeah, a lot, a lot, sort of a bit of pressure on us, but uh, not too much. We do have the home track advantage, obviously. Uh, ben Barker's another one who comes to Armadale. Uh, Ben's got the potential to be a very strong number one within the league. Um, is it maybe is he one of the biggest threats because he, he maybe sometimes he's a wee bit underrated? Yeah, Ben's Ben's form's hit and miss. You know, one week he could turn up and you know he could be the rider that he was a couple, a couple of years ago scoring bags of points, you know, knocking on the door of the British Championship and things like that. Or, you know, he could turn up and just go through the motions. It's it's one of those ones that's 
tough to call, but you know he is a talented rider and he always gives a hundred percent. So you, you know you can't you can't uh, sort of rest easy when you you know he's in the meeting. Of course, uh, we spoke about the track earlier on. Uh, <coughs> What would the differences be this week? So if we've got some drier weather, although it's still cold, what would the differences in the track be? Because that was a track that was prepared for rain. So if, for talking sake, if we didn't get any rain, how's the track set up? Um, a lot of it probably won't. They won't need to put as much fresh material down to try and dry up the track, um, which will sort of open up that outside line being not so heavy. Um, and therefore the transition between the inside and the outside line being not too heavy. But, you know, with better better weather... You know they they can prepare the track the the way they want it early on. They don't have to wait and sort of gamble on what the weather's doing. And uh, yeah, with the cold, it's all, it's always going to be tough. If the, as soon as that <laughs> cold weather sets into the base, it, it does make it really sort of uneasy to ride, um, especially once the, all the top layer of dirt's gone. Um, but once again, we got to take it as it comes and set the bikes up accordingly course as you mentioned red car a bit of a bogey team for edinburgh and we've had some excellent matches against the bears over the years uh, coming up is again big thanks to mike hunter and we're going to go to his blast from the past two classic races and i'm sure there's some faces in there are familiar to all the armadale fans Well, Heat 12 does look like an opportunity for the Bears to cut into that score somewhat. James Greaves is going on a tactical ride from gate four. It's Derek Sneddon, Josh Otte, Aaron Summers and James Greaves. Sneddon's got a screamer of a start from gate one. Greaves heading for the outside and he's got squeezed up against the fence though. And Sneddon leads the way into the pits corner. He is determined, there's no doubt about that. Reeves again hits the outside and he's... Oh, same again. No room there. Once again, Greaves on the outside. Snedden shuts the door again. Two laps gone. This could be a big one for Snedden if he can take it. He's locked up slightly there. Here comes Greaves again. And again, Snedden shut the door. Not so tightly that tight, perhaps. Once again, Snedden out and blocks. Into the last lap. Greaves going for that gap again. Has he got there? No, he hasn't. Once again, Snedden shuts the door. Fantastic effort by the Monarchs captain. Can he get there in the end? Oh, it's so close at the line. Well, I'm not sure who got that one. We'll wait for the referee's decision. It was a terrific race and a great effort by Derek Snedden. He may be out of form, but he's putting everything into trying to regain the form he had earlier in the season. And he very nearly won that one it was certainly a terrific effort and he really did nothing wrong gate number eight then and on the inside is captain derek snedden in blue and gate number two reserve replacement replacing paul, paul rafael kanopka is jan gravison and gate number three is a previously unbeaten justin sedgman and on the outside mark lemon in white and lemon makes a great start from name number four not so great sorry and but it's Grant Gravison from gate number two. And Sedgman up the inside of Lemon here to take second place. Can Snedden do the same and get the Monarchs on a 3-0? But it's out front, Jan Gravison, the reserve replacement is Snedden. He comes up the inside of Mark Lemon. He knocks, he unsettles Lemon. Lemon goes wide and it's Snedden. He pulls away into third place and that means it's a 3-0 as it stands. But Sedgman has Gravison on his sights. As I said previously, unbeaten in the meeting, he runs wide on Gravison, who's holding that inside line. He comes up the inside of Gravison now, and he moves him out of the way. That was a fantastic move by Sedgman as he runs wide, and he, Gravison tries to come back up the inside of the Australian, but he just can't quite get there. But it's Sedgman out in front now for his third great heat one of the evening. Second, Jan Gravison, third, Derek Snedden, and it's Justin Sedgman who takes the checkered flag. He keeps up his unbeaten record for the evening. Jan Gravison, who made such a good start out of gate number two, finishes second. And in third place, Derek Steden, who passed former teammate Mark Clemen. Two classic races there. Mitchell, it whets the appetite for Friday. And I really can't wait for this one. I must admit, Richie against Sam, it really has a headline that uh, I want to see, especially with Glasgow matches on the horizon. It's, it starts all the build up for that as well. Yeah, it does. You know, normally. I think normally we've already raced Glasgow by this time of year, so you know there's Richie gets a, a little pre-taste obviously before Glasgow come, and you know it does it does help the build up for that. But um, hopefully Sam can get one over him, and uh, yeah, it puts us 
that one's one's one step in ahead already when it comes to the tie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. And uh, don't forget, you can still buy tickets via the Edinburgh website. So once you've watched this, head over there and get your your, your tickets ahead of Friday's match. Uh, all that's left to say is, is that we we'll hope to see you at Armadale on Friday. Hope it's a cracking match, which I'm sure it will be. Big thanks to Mitchell, Mike Hunter for his videos, and of course, Cody Garcia. And we'll see you on Saturday morning for Friday Focus. Good night.